Hey everyone, I'm Angela Lynn. And I'm Jesse Lynn, and welcome back to another episode of But Where Are You Really From? Today is our final episode of The Batch. <gasps> I know it's almost the holidays which means it's almost the end of the year which also means it's almost a brand new year so today's episode is about new beginnings and how that theme is playing across in our current lives <laughs> um it's very top of mind for me because by the time you are listening to this my Two plus year digital nomad life has officially come to a close. So I'm literally starting a new chapter of life. I feel like there's this idea that a new chapter of your life has to be this like wildly different momentous change. And while it can be that, I also feel like a lot of the new chapters in my life are just little changes that I'm experiencing throughout the day. So whether it's like trying a new event, making a new friend, learning something new at work. Like these are all kind of new things, little, little mini chapters of life that I'm encountering. And it all just seems to go by like so fast. This year is over already. For me, mine is a massive overhaul of life as I currently know it. So as of today, I don't yet know what my plans are like career wise from here but as my life is coming to a new chapter and new considerations are coming into play I'm also kind of at a weird crossroads where I'm having to confront if I need to go back to corporate life in some capacity even if that's just for more of like a temporary point in time like I still don't know that I want to go back forever to corporate life, but basically like financial things are top of mind for me. Like we're going to move back to the U.S. and we're still kind of on the fence now about like if we're going to really try to buy a house here in Southern California because it's so expensive. But if we are like it just costs so much money between the down payment and the mortgage payment and also we're going to just start trying to have a family those things are <laughs> babies are expensive just like a lot of things are expensive so it's kind of like oh does it just like make more financial sense for me to have to reconsider the selling my soul part so that's a big part of my considerations right now but hey i mean like you have been gone from that world for a while and i feel like you've learned a lot about yourself especially talking about your need for like self-validation through the corporate structure. So maybe you'll have a more healthy relationship to your job now if you return and you'll have a different new beginnings experience with corporate life where you just, it's acceptable, permissible. And yeah, I mean, obviously the transition, it would be going from this like full-time content creation thing to back to more of a structured like default thing. So one of the things I guess I've been reflecting on as this period of my life is coming to a close is like the highs and lows and what I learned from putting into this like fully creative venture as my main thing. I feel like I learned a lot about myself. So as we discussed, like kind of really dissecting my identity and like where my root idea of self-worth comes from and detaching that from other people, especially because as we've talked about, the social media stuff has become so like unhealthy for my mental health. So really learning to not weigh everybody's opinion as like more valuable than my own opinion of myself um, as like a number one thing. And also like from the other end of it, I see it as a strength that I've been able to do this kind of work for the last few years and not like just bail out so quickly, despite how much negativity the internet can throw at you, because it is like very personal the way that those social media troll attacks are. And I think about like, if the like people who worked in, for example, the social media team at some of the companies I worked at could even stand like a week of being personally attacked like that on social media, and I think the answer is no. So I think there's like a lot to be learned from 
putting yourself in those kind of like vulnerable positions. And I also think it positions me well to work potentially in a role that is like has something to do with creators, content creators, because now that we have been this (laughs) for so many years, like I know exactly what pain points and like needs and stuff are. So I think it'll be cool to kind of like cross over my traditional marketing skills, corporate life stuff with like being on the other side of what they are always pitching. Yeah, I think it takes a certain level of persistence to have taken our enterprise from zero to 60 and also like resilience to be able to deal with all of the things on the socials. I mean, you know, the big brands have like all these tools to just filter all that stuff. So like, it's different when you're on the grounds doing it by yourself, I think. But yeah, um, other than that, my last like new chapter stuff is exciting, although also like panicky in some ways. So the other like, new thing I kind of teased already is that we are trying to start a family. And that's in like two senses, because we are also on the wait list for a puppy. So puppy. yeah, so we'll have first a fur baby to practice <laughs> raising <laughs> before a human baby arrives. So it's definitely going to be a very different lifestyle after that point. But I think I am excited to see how I also develop like to stretch into that role because that's just like no one can really prepare for like being the caretaker of lives <laughs> until you do it. I feel like at every stretch of my life, I've been like, you know what? I'm going to enter this next stretch a more knowledgeable and better prepared person. And every stretch, I'm like, it's fake it till you make it, baby. <laughs> fake it till it's you all- make it. <laughs> it is always fake it till you make it. I think I told you, and maybe we even talked about this on the podcast before, but. You know, parents, so it's funny. It's like parents get shit on because they always post about being parents all the time. But like, it's a really hard job, right? And you're like doing, you're encountering so many struggles all the time for the first time. But I remember when Karen was in the first year of having Amber, she posted this like friends meme or whatever on Instagram stories where it was like, where's the adult in the room? And then like, no one answers him. He's like, wait, it's me. And it's like, that's literally... I'm sure what like every parent thinks when shit is just like hitting the fan with a baby. Yeah. And it's both kind of, as you said, it's both exciting and challenging because there, I don't think there, I mean, there are definitely wrong things you can do with your baby very clearly, but like there isn't like a right way to do everything. It's a, you're raising like a person. It's not like a math problem, you know, where there's a right answer at the end of the day. Yeah. And even if you have like multiple kids, because, you know, we previously had Catherine and Mark on the show, like way early on to talk about parenting. And they now have two kids and the two babies are like very different from each other. So they're like, I don't know. It's not even like, yes, there were some learnings, but they're like, we're doing a lot of stuff very differently from the first baby too. (laughs) Well, I will say that my chaptering is not so dramatic, but I have thought about this podcast a lot in the way that it frames my life. Like from the first episode, what we were talking about and how I felt sort of certain things to now the things that we're talking about and how I now feel towards certain things. I feel like there are some market changes, but overall, I think like the the time we've been doing this podcast, I've really been focused on building friendships, relationships, pursuing like random things that I don't know if that I will like to do, but just kind of like throwing myself at it and seeing what sticks. And I think just experiencing a lot of new things. I know that I talked to you a lot about how I am a homebody and I feel like that's very much true like Monday through Friday. But like I try to like get myself out of that zone every weekend So I feel like there's something in my life that's always new. One of the things that I feel like I'm trying to work on now that I have a good friend group is like, it's almost like full circle. Like before I was like, I'm cool by being by myself. And now there are friends I'm like, oh, I don't want to go anywhere without friends. And now I'm kind of back to like, I need to be okay with like going to a place with no friends and like trying to make new friends. So I'm like kind of back to square one. But this weekend was like a really... I had a really nice example of that where it was like, I invited some friends out to this like techno club thing and I didn't know 
what it was going to be like per se. But we all went and we had a lot, like a pretty good time, but they ducked out like earlier. And I was like, oh, I don't really want to leave yet, but all my friends are leaving. And I feel like old me probably wouldn't like, okay, I'm leaving too. But I stayed for like another hour and a half. And like, even though I didn't actually get to meet anyone because it was like way too loud to actually talk to anyone, I still had a really good time. And then like, I went home. I like the idea of like, thinking about these things as like little personal victories for myself because I just think that like a different me probably would have been like very intimidated and and not stayed. Hey listeners, wondering how you can support us? The biggest way is by increasing our visibility by following us on Instagram at where are you from pod on TikTok at but where are you really from subscribing to our YouTube channel under but where are you really from podcast rating and reviewing us on Apple podcasts and telling your friends the more people we can get to listen to the show the more we can continue spotlighting different perspectives and stories and if you feel so inclined we're also accepting donations at buymeacoffee.com slash where are you from thanks y'all <laughs> Yeah, I definitely have been very proud of you during your entire social related evolution transformation. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to go out to put yourself out there and like meet new people all the time, especially once you do start getting comfortable again with like the new people you've met who are now old friends. So for sure, I think a lot of people don't have the guts to constantly push themselves because Essentially, you have to learn to be comfortable with yourself, right? Like you're just like being with yourself, essentially, but in like a new environment. And most people aren't comfortable with themselves. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There's like a certain level of there's a certain level of enforced delusion when it comes to that, where you're just like, I can be fine by myself because I'm the best or like I'm the sexiest or I'm the funniest and you're like projecting this energy, if you will. But no, I definitely feel like I've gotten more comfortable just being by myself in spaces with other people and like being okay with not having something happen. And as long as I'm having a good time, like that's totally cool. Yes. Well, you do have to fake it till you make it in a lot of ways when you put yourself in those situations it's everyone does that but i'm glad you're able to push past it until you do make it <laughs> and i always think and i think about these new things that i'm pursuing in a way that doesn't signal the end of the person that i am or the end of like a previous chapter necessarily like i still feel like fundamentally i'm the same person that i was a couple of years ago in terms of like values things I generally like, things I generally don't like. I feel like these things have been, like, values have been refined. The list of likes and don't likes have been dramatically uh, enlarged over the <laughs> couple of years. But I, I think at the end of the day, like, having a new beginning doesn't mean that something is ending. And I feel like that is something I try to keep in mind a lot because there's always, like, this hustle to become, like, the next you, the new you. Like, what's the next evolution of yourself and it feels a lot like you have to like kill your old self to become that and I think there were parts of my life where I bought into that narrative and it just made me very miserable because it was like you can't be yourself in order to be the next version of yourself and now I see it more like you are still yourself you have to be yourself to be the next better version of yourself yeah I jive with that a lot I feel like at the core, we're all always like kind of the same person. But as you go through your life, you're put in different situations that kind of like test who you are, and you learn more about who you actually are. Because, you know, I think the core sensibilities, you talk about values and such, those don't necessarily change. But you don't always know everything about like how you might think about something or what might trigger you in a positive or negative way until you're confronted with said situation. So it doesn't mean that the old quote unquote old you wasn't the real you or is gone. It's just like you're discovering new layers about yourself as you're confronted with new experiences and new tests in life. So that you start understanding like the full version of yourself. Maybe when you were younger, you only knew like 
a quarter of who you were and you're kind of like collecting more pieces to understand your like full self. That totally makes sense. And I feel like that's exciting in a way, right? Like you're constantly refreshing your understanding of yourself. And it's also healthy, I think, to to be interrogating who you are, to be like, is this, does this align? Does this make sense? So all those are like lovely sunshine rainbow things that have happened over the last three years. And I would say probably the only thing that is on my mind a little bit is similar to your career piece, because I think we were the very same, like we were very dedicated to career. And now it's kind of what I described to you before, where it's like, I'm going to be 100% in this 50% that I've allocated towards work. But the rest of that, you know, is going to go towards my personal pursuits. But at the same time, like, you can't help but do like the, the like, you know, checking on the, the neighbors kind of situation where you're like, so and so just got promoted to like VP or of whatever. So it's like a lot of these things where you see progress from different people in your community. And it does give me a little bit of anxiety that I've like taken my foot off the hustle a little bit. But at like at some point, you kind of have to like, it's a cycle, right? You hustle a little, you chill a little, I feel like I'm in the little chill situation. But watching everyone else still hustle gives me anxiety because I feel like I'm oh my gosh, like, what if I miss the boat on something? What if I am missing out on learning something that is going to be so critical to my career in the future or whatnot? So that's probably like the old, like the biggest anxiety, like thinking about what other people are doing and feeling like maybe I'm not doing enough to keep up with all those people. I feel that, but I think we talked about this before I, I turned you on to that book, Designing Your, Own Li- uh, Designing Your Life. And they talk about, you know, different aspects of your life and career is just one of them and kind of like how full your gas meter is and how content you are in that part of your life. There's just like so many aspects of what makes a person a person and what brings you ultimately happiness in your life that's not just work, that it's normal for you to compare yourself to other people and wonder if you should be doing something else. But I think it's always good to kind of check back in of like what is working for you and realize that not everyone else has the good things that you have either. That's totally fair. And what a great learning for the new year. All right. Well, listeners, thank you for joining us weekly over the last couple of weeks as we have rolled out new ideas, new topics, new guests. We hope you enjoyed all of the episodes that we have produced for you this year. And we hope that you will come back and listen to more episodes in the future. And since it's the new year, we're also wishing you a happy new year. We hope that it's full of friends, new experiences, love, joy, and wonderful new chapters or mini chapters. And come back in the new year. We will have new episodes for you then. But as we did discuss, we will have to see kind of where this podcast thing goes. I think realistically, we both enjoy doing this show in general. So it's going to live on in some way or another. But pending how our lives play out, which we have no idea how they're going to play out until they do. But we will let you know when we come back. And no matter what, we will be back. So check back in with us in 2024 and until then have an amazing holiday season and a happy new year and uh last time for the year bye bye bye